By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have some beautiful old school magic for you. I am playing against Yoop today. He's been on the channel before and he always brings fun decks. Today he's bringing a pink Armageddon deck to the table, Pink Geddon. So it's white and red with Armageddon. And uh, actually it's not a fun deck at all, Yoop. It looks pretty strong. I'm battling his deck with my signature deck, Timmy's Spellbook. So that is mono blue, kind of mid-range control. We've seen it on the channel before. It's always a joy for me to play this. Uh, I always hope to be able to cast a pirate ship and some protocol sorcerers and kind of ping my way to victory. Anyway, let's see if that is going to happen today. Before I jump into the deck decks, I would like to just tell you one thing. As always, you can also choose to skip this section Go straight to the actual match. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on MTG Games. It'll take you straight to the action. And there you can also find all the information about the rules. And also a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Yes, I have a Patreon. Have a look at patreon.com slash Timmy Talks after the show if you would like to support me. I would really, really appreciate it. Anyway, enough about that. Now let's start with the deck text. I'm going to start with the deck of Yoop Pink Geddon. And here we see the deck of Yoop. So it's red and white, hence the name Pink. And there are Armageddon's in here, so Pink Geddon. And it's it's pretty interesting because he's playing with Setch Troll. And Setch Troll, of course, is a good creature, but he's not playing any black. So he purely wants to activate the Setch Troll plus one plus one and regenerate ability with the Batlands and, of course, the Scrublands here in the deck, which is pretty cool. I mean, you've got eight, so you've got Swamps. Another interesting thing here is that it's kind of a non-bow combining Armageddon with Setch Troll because when you play, of course, Armageddon, you destroy all the lands you have and that takes that bonus away from Setch Troll. On the other hand, as soon as you draw into a Swamp or maybe you're keeping a dual land in hand with a Swamp, um, you know, you, your Batlands, for example, you play your Armageddon, then you play your Batlands, all of a sudden you've got a 3-3 with Regenerate, you know, and you've got your re Regeneration Mana open probably. So if you time it right, it could be pretty good. So I'm kind of interested to see how that synergy is going to go. And for the rest of the deck, we actually see a lot of like obvious cards here. Of course, you're going to play a Savannah Lions, just a quick creature to get out. I think uh, Granite Gargoyle is also pretty good in this build, right? You just get your 2-2 Flyer out. Flying is pretty good. Evasion in the old school format. Then just quickly get your Armageddon out in, in turn four, maybe with some ramp in the form of the Felwer Stone. We see the Mox and Soul Ring. You know, you can kind of get your um, Armageddon out early if you have your threats out early as well. And kind of do that classic strategy where, I mean, you have more threats, play your Armageddon, kill all the lands, and just keep attacking. I think Armageddon against my deck is quite good because my deck is slow. So I really need to have my counter magic up to counter away those Armageddons with Yoop. If I can't, it's really going to be a big problem because he just has more tempo. Um, as I said earlier, Setch Troll kind of interesting in this Armageddon strategy. Another card that's kind of interesting in that same strategy is, of course, the three Jam Day Tomes. You don't really expect Jam Day Tomes in a deck with Armageddons because a Jam Day Do Tome is, of course, four to cast, four and tap draw card. It's quite slow. You would expect it more... Uh, in a control deck, maybe you would expect more a Jalem Tome in this deck. So I'm really curious to see how JM Day Tome holds up. I think that, um, you know, Yoop is using the Armageddon really as a control card here and really wants to think about how much mana he's going to drop on the table. If you look at his deck, he doesn't need more than four mana anyway. So maybe as soon as he hits the four mana, the four lands, he's going to keep the lands in his hand until he finds the right moment to cast the Armageddon and then start dropping lands again. So it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to play this out. This is the deck of Yoop. Now let's take a look at my list, Timmy's Spellbook. And here we see my deck. So it's mono blue. It's called Timmy's Spellbook. You've probably seen it on the channel before. I'm still tweaking it. I'm still changing it. And I love to play with it. Um, I always call it kind of like a mid-range control because what I want to do is, I, this is a slow starter. I want a slow start. I want to keep two blue open. I constantly want to have that threat of counter magic towards my opponent. And then as we slowly go into mid-game, I want to start, you know, playing out my Tims. I slowly want to start pinging away. Maybe play control magic with counter backup so I can have like a two for one. That's kind of my strategy. And, and, and as the game 
continues. I'm going to get more and more control. And of course, cards like Icy Manipulator are really important. A card like Copy Artifact Control Magic are really important. I kind of get ahead on the game and then hopefully I can find some power or some other card draw with my Jam Day Tome or my Ancestral Recall or Brain Geyser and I can get some card advantage going and kind of win it from there. So this is really a patient deck. You know, you've got to take your time and I always feel that I'm the most vulnerable early in the game. That's also why in my sideboard I'm playing two mazes of if, for example, and ivory towers, right? Because at the start of the game, my opponent can sometimes go too fast and can kind of win it from there. Because counter magic is not really good when you're behind. And that's exactly what I'm a little bit worried about in this matchup. We saw the Savannah Lines, we saw the Granite Gargles, we saw the Armageddon's. I think if my opponent can, you know, resolve some Armageddon's early in the game with a creature on the board, I'll be so far behind, I can't keep up. You know, I'll probably be dead before that. So what I want to do is try to keep counter magic open. Of course, you know, when my opponent starts, I don't know that he's playing Armageddon. So hopefully I can kind of sniff that out when I see what he's doing, you know. But I think that's going to be really important in this matchup. Anyway, enough about my strategy. This is the deck I'm playing with today. We've looked at the deck of Yoop. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So Yoop is sitting on the left. Ooh, look at this hand here. Wheel of Fortune, Armageddon, Dust to Dust. Strip Mine, that's pretty good. Not as, like he doesn't have any creatures, so no early threats. Let's take a look at my hand there. Wow, that is, <laughs> it's hard to see. Ooh, Ancestral Recall. I've got, I've got a good hand because of that Ancestral. I also saw Tim and enough land, so I'm really happy with this, uh, this hand. Let's see who gets to start. So Yoop on the play here. So he's playing Pink Geddon. So white and red with Armageddon's. And I'm playing my uh, mono blue deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Starting, of course, with an island. Passing the turn. Attacking me here for two. And this is what you need to do against me. Just play really aggressive. Don't give me any time to build up. So now I've got two blue. I'm passing the turn here. So I do have a Tim in hand. I wonder if I'm going to play it out at turn three. And this is difficult because he's got some threat, which makes it hard for me. So now I'm on 16, and that's a problem with counter magic. If you're under pressure, it's not the best strategy. There's another island. Do I have the discipline here, or am I going to play out my Tim? I am going to play out the Tim here. So one of the things that the Tim can do, of course, not now because it still has summoning sickness, but when it doesn't anymore, it can block the factory and then ping the factory, so I can trade a Tim for a factory if he attacks with it, of course. Cannot do it right now because a Tim still has summoning sickness. Oh man, another factory. This is really bad news for me. These factories, they're a problem. I wish there was a blue sinkhole. That would be ideal, but there's not. I've been thinking actually about putting Psychic Venoms in the deck to put on the factories. Anyway, finding another island. If I can play a ghost ship, that would be pretty good. It's a pretty solid blocker, especially in combination with the Tim. A little bit in the tank. I'm already on 13. Next turn, I'm probably going to take another hit for 3. I'll be down to 10. Playing an Ancestral Recall, so I'm going to dig a little bit. Can I find something here? Going to tap 2 blue. Going to play a city in a bottle, which is not a good card. I think I should have kept it in hand. It's probably better to pretend to have counter magic, you know, than play this bottle because the bottle does absolutely nothing on this board. And I think we've seen the list of Yoop. It does nothing against his deck. And that's the thing with city in a bottle. Yes, it's a great card. And when you play it main, you have that surprise effect. But I can tell you when you play with it, you do notice how often it's actually not really good and not useful. There's a strip mine taking care of the island. So I'm expecting him to attack here. Does have an Armageddon in hand. Could consider playing an Armageddon, but why would he? He's got full pressure. Playing a Jam Day Tome. I feel kind of lucky that he's not putting more pressure on me. So I'm pinging him here for one, putting him on 19. Drawing a card for turn. Hopefully I can find an island and I guess a ghost ship. Okay, factory is kind of nice. Tapping four here. 
there is a ghost ship. So this is a 2-4 card from the dark. You can pay 3 blue to regenerate it, and it is flying. It's one of the better cards in the dark. Passing the turn back to Yoop. Let's see what he can do. There's another factory. Insane. So he can make his factory a 4-4. Four -four. Oh, this is really bad. The factories are killing me in this matchup. What I could consider doing is double block. Just taking the four damage. Because then I could have dealt four points of damage. But I'm not doing it. Pinging Yoop for one year. I'm on nine. Maybe next turn I can block on the factory and the ghost ship. Okay, there's a maze of if. That is pretty good. So now I'm kind of in that phase of the match where I'm gaining some control. But of course, Yoop has a gem day tome. And he's on a higher life total. But it's difficult for him now with that maze on the battlefield. The maze actually changes quite a lot. I could have considered attacking him as well with the ghost ship. But I'm so low, I don't want to take a risk here. There's a mountain. I'm surprised he's playing out so many lands. I guess he wants to have enough lands to end use the GM they told him and, and do something else. Passing the turn, you're pinging him again for one. He's dropping to 17. Let's see what I can do. Another island. Tapping five. Are we going to see an air elemental? No, we're going to see a pirate ship. 4-3 pirate ship. It cannot attack. It's got island home. So my opponent needs to have islands or else the ship cannot sail. But it can ping for one. It's got cannons on board. I mean, for me, pirate ship is always one of these cards where I'm like, it's a rare, you know, it's five mana for a 4-3. And it's got a disadvantage that it can only attack if your opponent has islands. And it also, you know, when my opponent plays a Tsunami, I lose all my islands. My pirate ship sinks, which I think is very flavorful. But I also think they could have made it a little bit better. Maybe a 3-4, maybe that you could tap it, that it would deal two damage instead of one. I don't know. Anyway, my opponent here drawing a card on end step and taking his turn. And I'm still playing very conservatively, not attacking with the ghost ship. Perhaps I should right now. There's a Mox Ruby. And of course, he can start digging for answers. For example, a Swords to Plowshares will be quite good on the ghost ship. Wow, he's going to tap seven. What is he going to do for seven? I wonder. There's an Armageddon first. Oh, look at that. He is playing the Armageddon. So he's got three floating, and then he plays a Granite Gargoyle. Wow, this is a surprise, because I can actually ping his Gargoyle. Oh no, he's got the Mox Ruby open. There's the Plateau also. Pinging him here, putting him on 16. This must have been a hard decision for my opponent, but I mean, he can block the Ghost Ship. And he probably has a lot of lands in hand. I'm expecting another land drop here. And he knows that I'm playing a slow deck. So it's really tough for me being back at one land. There's a Felwer Stone. Yeah, he's ramping up. He's got enough mana next turn to start using the Tome again. And of course, I lost that Pirate Ship, by the way, because of that Armageddon. That is very unfortunate. And it's also why the Gargoyle was safe, even if he wouldn't have had that one Ruby. I mean, I am kind of lucky that I'm finding my, um, my lands here. There's a copy artifact. I wonder what I'm going to copy. Probably the Felwer Stone or the Gem Day Tome, depending on how much land I've got in hand. Passing the turn here. I mean, if my strategy is to ping him to death, it's going to take me 15 more turns. But for now, I just want to kind of rebuild after that Armageddon. There's another Plateau. Four cards in hand for me. And Yoop now has enough mana 
to to activate his Gemnitome. He's in a pretty good place, actually. I really understand the Armageddon now. There is a Wheel of Fortune. That is pretty sweet. Look at that. Losing a Psionic Blast, some islands, some more lands. That's unfortunate. And I believe an Icy. The Icy Manipulator was sweet. So we're both drawing seven fresh cards. Let's see what he can do. He's losing a dust to dust, it seems, there from that Wheel of Fortune and a land. I mean, dust to dust could have been interesting for him. He could remove the copy artifact and the, the, the bottle. The bottle does nothing, but still. There's a soul ring. Oh, that's really good. Is he going to play out another gargoyle, perhaps? Going to tap three. Disenchant on the copy artifact. So really trying to keep my mana low. I think that's a good strategy. Pinging him to 14, taking my turn. That Tim is doing some work, by the way. There's another island. Attacking here with the ship because he doesn't have any red mana to pump the gargoyle. So he's going to drop to 12. Going to ping him. I think I have a time walk here. Exactly. Or else I wouldn't have attacked probably with the ship. And of course, I wouldn't have pinged him in my own main phase. Hopefully I can find another island here. So that's kind of good, right? After a wheel being able to play that time walk. Oh, but that's all I can do. That is unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. If I could have like found another land, I could have played an island, keep counter magic open, activate my factory and attack. And look at this, Yupier is attacking with the Granite Gargoyle. Does that mean he's got a bolt in hand? So I am blocking. My idea here is that if he uses a bolt on a ship, at least he's not using it on my life. Here we see the bolt. There is a counter spell on the lightning bolt. So does he have another one? It looks like he does not, but of course he can pump his gargoyle here. He can save it. First going to draw another card. So all this is done before damage is dealt. Because I believe he still needs to invest a mana to save the gargoyle here, if I'm not mistaken. Or wait a minute, he does have two lands tapped there. Yeah, so he already pumped the gargoyle to 2-3. I could give it a final ping, but then he can still use his open plateau to make it a 2-4, and it survives. There's another plateau. He's in the tank here, tapping the one plateau. Does he have another bolt? Swords to plowshares. Going to put him on 10, going to lose to Tim. Going to go up to 10 myself, so we're both on 10. Wow, what an interesting match. I can now attack him with the factory and the ship, put him on six. Playing another Tim instead. Attacking him here, which is risky. I kind of still feel, I'm not sure if this is a good move. I am more the control player. Playing against a deck with red means direct damage. I mean, I'm now going to drop to eight probably, which is not ideal. I think I should have kept this ship untapped unless maybe I've got some psionic blasts in hand. In that case, it's more like a race. But I, I lost the Psionic Blast um, because I had to discard it after the wheel and I only play with two. There's another Gargoyle. What else is he going to do here? Tapping two more. Another Gargoyle. So tapping six in total, attacking here. And this is really good because one of the things he can do is next turn attack with all the gargoyles and I can only block one and he can save it by pumping the toughness. I mean, Granite Gargoyle is really a good creature, kind of underestimated. There's another Tim, but I mean, this is dire. I'm in trouble here. Passing the turn. He's going to untap with his 3-2-2 two, two flyers. He can attack with everything. Probably then going to take four points of damage. I'll be on four.
Yeah, he's going to attack with everything here. So I'm going to block one. Going to take four points of damage. Going to drop to four. Of course, he's going to save the gargoyle here, making it a 2-3. He's going to draw a card for turn. I can ping him to 7 because that other Timmy still has summoning sickness. This is such a close match. I'm on 4, he's on 8. I can attack him next turn, put him on 6. If I, if I count to ping there and step, I can put him on 5, put him on 3, but it's not enough. If I have a psionic blast in hand, I can win it. But then again, if my opponent has a bolt, oh man, there's a bolt, but it's, uh, it's on my... Uh, Tim with the summoning sickness, of course. I'm going to ping him to seven. Oh, man. This is such a close game one. There's another island. Do I have a psionic blast? I need it. Going to attack with both, it seems. Going to put him on three. There's a disenchant, though. There's a counter spell, but that's not going to save me. Oh man, I'm I'm not gonna win it. Passing the turn. Man, oh man. Yoop winning here in game one. I, I see no way out for me. I'm tapped out. I only got one Tim. I can put him on two, but that's it. He's gonna trample me with his granite gargoyles. I love the flavor text of that creature, by the way. Check it out if you don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm sure you do if you know old school magic. Ooh, he's going to do something spicy, I guess. Going to play an Armageddon. And I'm losing the game here. Oh, that was so incredibly close, but game one here goes to Yoop. Winning it even after playing both of my blue power cards, right? Don't forget that I had Ancestral Recall and Time Walk in this match, but this is really a tough matchup for me. Like Armageddon is a difficult card for me. Anyway, Yoop winning here the first game and uh, we're going to shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm on the play after losing the first one and there we see my hand. Ooh, Soul Ring, Mox. That is really good because I can kind of ramp up and those cards survive in Armageddon. Really happy with this opener. But then again, I was happy with my hand in game one and lost. Let's check out the hand of Yoop. Again, not really looking very good here. Granite Gargo. Okay, the source is looking decent. I mean, the dust to dust can be good against me. Ooh, especially with that um, Soul Ring Mox Sapphire in hand. Let's look at my opener here. So Soul Ring turn one. Passing to turn, so I'm keeping my mocks in hand here. I want to play out the mocks when I can actually do something with it because it's just too risky. If I play it now and he's got a mox as one play disenchant, that would be a problem for me. Let's see what I can do here on turn two, just a plateau by my opponent. There's an island. There's the mox. Tapping five. Oh, a turn two air elemental. This is really sweet. Oh man. Of course, that Swords was in his hand. That is not cool, Yoop. That is not cool. I got to turn to Air Elemental. That, like, never happens. Remember, he also has that Dust to Dust in hand. So next turn, I mean, it can be devastating for me. I mean, I was pretty happy with my hand with all the ramp, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, playing a Jam Day Tome. Again, he's got the Dust to Dust, though. Hopefully, I've got a Counter Spell in hand. That one card, I hope it's a Counter Spell. I need protection from the Dust to Dust. There's a Scrubland. There's the Dust to Dust. Do I have Counter Magic, please? Please, Counter Magic. I guess I don't. Oh, man, this is bad. Attacking for two here, putting him on 18. Two cards in hand, passing to turn. I wonder how many cards my opponent has. I mean, he already played out quite a lot, so it cannot be too many. But then again, he's on the draw as well. That dust to dust was so good. If I could have just had the gem day tome. There's a soul ring. He can attack me here, of course. 
with the factory. There's a Savannah Lines. There's a Gargoyle. Oh, this is a problem. This is devastating. I mean, you know, he's got so many creatures now. I mean, I'm still on 24, which is good. Three cards in hand, passing the turn. Not doing anything. I wonder what cards I have. Perhaps more air elementals. And some counter magic. Who knows? Playing a control magic, though. I guess I'm still doing that in my turn. Yeah, probably probably forgot to check my hand. Anyway, so I'm playing control magic on Granite Gargoyle and then I'm passing the turn. Hopefully this Gargoyle can stick. I mean, he's playing with white, right? I'm sure he's got disenchants in hand. Tapping four here. There's a Jam Day Tome. Oh, that's so good for him. Attacking with the two one, offering a trade, taking the damage. I think that's a good decision. Drawing a card for turn. Hopefully I've got a copy artifact for the Gem Tome. That would be really, really sweet. There's a Library of Alexandria. Not relevant at the moment though. Yeah, I think I should tap this different. I need to keep two blue open. Choose not to though. I want to keep my factory open. I guess to block on the lions, but... You know, maybe it's better to keep the threat of counter magic open. Then again, I only have one card in hand. So choosing not to here, really choosing to keep the mana open to animate my factory. Remember, the factory can pump itself as well. So it's a 3-3. Three, three, so that means it's a good blocker for the lions and, of course, the factory on the side of Yoop. I also have the granite gargoyle still. I think he's probably just going to attack me with the gargoyle. Exactly. Gonna put me on 20. And he's got the mana and he's got the gem day tome. That's my biggest fear. Another gargoyle. That is unfortunate. Oh, he's really taking over this game. Bad news for me. Drawing a card for turn two cards in hand. I'm really far behind here, it seems. He's gonna get some more cards. This is bad. And the problem for me, of course, is that, yes, I've got his Granite Gargoyle, but I don't have red mana to pump it. And there's no way in my deck to make red mana. One of the things I could do later in the game, if he plays a Felwer Stone, copy the Felwer Stone, then it can generate red mana. I could make it a 2-3 and then block his Gargoyles. I don't really see that happen, though. There's a Disenchant. And that is the risk. So when he actually offered me the trade for the Lions, I was considering it. Because now, it's his creature again. Dropping here to 16, it's looking really, really bad for me. Binging the lion. At least that's something, but next turn he can attack me for 6. Hopefully I've got an air elemental, or maybe Mahamoti Jin here tapping 6. Brain Geyser, maybe even better, drawing 4. Let's hope I can find something useful. I am entering a world of pain, though. He's going to draw again another card. Two cards in hand for him, so I have the card advantage. Problem is I've got nothing in the air. He's going to attack me for six. That is a big problem. Got five cards in hand, but I'm tapped out. And I just, I guess I just missed that one extra land to draw another card, because then next turn I could have had seven in hand. I could have had an activation of Loa. That would have been fantastic. I just seem to miss that little bit of luck here in this matchup. I think that Dust to Dustin early in that game was really uh, decisive. I'm not dead yet, though. Still on 16. Yeah, he's going to animate the factory. That's brutal. He's got the other factory played out, so he can make it a 3-3. Oh, what to do here? Am I going to chump block with the wizard? That is the question. Maybe I should. Exactly what I do, and I'm going to... Ping my opponent for one, probably. Going to put him on 17. Going to take six, drop to 10. This is very, very painful. Going to draw into card number six. Play an island. I need like an air elemental, but even that is not enough. 
really into tank here. You can see there me tapping my fingers, trying to come up with a way to get out of this. Tapping two mana. There's a Chaos Orb. Okay, okay. That could be a start of something. Copy Artifact on Chaos Orb would be quite nice. Really into tank here. Probably want to keep the factory open as well as a potential blocker. I mean, I'm on 10. I should be able to survive one more turn. But of course, I don't want to go below 3 because then I'm in bolt range. Passing the turn here to Yoop. This is really, really tricky. I think it's going to go full aggro. Animate the two factories. Attack with everything. He's first going to draw another card. I really wonder what he's uh, going to do. Are you playing a land for turn? I'm expecting him to turn everything sideways. Perhaps want to keep a factory at bay to pump the other factory when I block with my factory. Exactly, just animating one, attacking with the Air Force and the factory. So again, the Gargoyles play a very big role in this second game. If I take everything, I'm going to be on one. I don't think that's a good decision. Activating the factory, blocking his factory. So that's going to be a trade. Activating the Chaos Orb, probably going to flip on one of the Gargoyles. Is there going to be a disenchant in response? That would be killer. Okay, I'm going to flip. Let's hope that I hit here. Ooh, yeah, it's a hit. Close, though, but it's a hit. Killing the gargoyle, trading the factories, taking four, dropping to six. And now we just got to pray that he cannot find the bolts. Oh, this is also bad news. More threats on the board here by Yoop. There's a counterspell, though, on the Savannah lines. Untapping, drawing a card for turn. Lots of pressure on the board. What can I do? Tapping six. There's a Mahamoti Jin. Okay, at least I get some style points, but I don't think it's going to save me. Maybe one more turn. It is a blocker, of course. He is untapping here. Uh, I'm in such a bad position. I'm in such a bad position. It's amazing. It's tough. So many creatures coming from the side of my opponent. Gargoyle after gargoyle. Threat after threat. And I'm on six. Even with the great hand with so much ramp. And I mean that GM Day Tome on the side of Yoop is doing so much work. Attacking here with everything. So probably going to block a gargoyle. Taking four. Going to go to two. Does he have a bolt? Does he have a bolt in hand? Maybe he doesn't. Going to keep my fingers crossed. Okay, I've got one more turn. Going to tap four. No, three. Can I find a Tim? Tap five. Okay, there's a pirate ship. All I can do here is pass the turn and pray that he cannot find a bolt. Only one card in hand, but he's got the book and he's got a draw. Oh man, I need a lot of luck. A lot of luck. He's going to draw a card for turn. I mean, I've been with my back against the wall in game one, and now in game two, it's the same story. Actually, it's worse in game two, like in game one, where we're kind of going equal. Look at the life totals. He's on 17, I'm on two against a deck with bolts. This feels really, really bad. With one island open. Let's see what he can do. There is the bolt. I am dead. It's the end of the road. Let's see what I had in hand here. 
I'm not going to show my hand. That's unfortunate. Anyway, um, stick around because even though I've lost two matches, we are going to play game number three because we play Magic for fun. So we are going to go to game three. Hopefully, hopefully I can get a win in or else it's uh, it's a complete destruction, which would be really bad for my self-esteem. So uh, please join me for game three and um, yeah, send me send me some good positive energy. Hopefully I can win game number three. Game number three, here we go. So man, two games down. This is bad for the spellbook. And I'm, I'm, remember, he's playing without blue power, right? Usually you're always against these decks with blue power cards, but Yoop is not even. He's not even. It shows, it shows the strength of Armageddon, I feel. And also how he's playing it is quite interesting. Anyway, he's taking a mulligan here, it seems. Very interesting with the Jam Day Tomes and the Setch Trolls and the Armageddons. It's, it's quite an interesting list. Anyway, here we see my hand. We haven't sideboarded, by the way. So this is a game without sideboards. Uh, because Yoop doesn't have a sideboard yet. And we thought then you would just get Red Elemental Blast, Blue Elemental Blast. So we thought it was more interesting. It does mean that basically my deck is two dead cards. Because the uh, City in a Bottle does nothing. But uh, it is what it is. There's an island here and passing the turn. There's a factory and a pass. An island again. And I think I saw a city in a bottle in my opener hand, by the way. So that's kind of a, a nothing card. I could have considered taking a mulligan just because of that. Anyway, attacking here with the factory, dropping to 18. There's a factory... And tapping the factory here. Okay, tapping three. There's a copy on the factory. Okay, copying the Mishra's factory. Which is actually a pretty good uh, play. The problem is here I'm tapped out. So I am giving Yoop the option here to do whatever. He doesn't have to worry about counter magic. Has enough mana for a gargoyle or even worse, a set troll. Which would be a 3-3 because of the Batlands. Playing a Felwer Stone attacking for two. So this could have been worse. Not too bad, just playing the Felwer Pass. Playing a Library of Alexandria. Probably top deck that card, 5 in hand. I wonder if I'm just going to wait and try to build up to 7 here. This looked like a risky strategy though. Attacking for 2. I, uh, I don't like this. I don't like this because in this matchup I'm really not the aggressor. I think I should have kept it at bay. Be patient. Let's see what he's going to do. There's another bad lance. So five mana here for my opponent. He seems to be in the tank here. I'm expecting more creatures, which would kind of be a nightmare. Another Felwer Stone. Okay, that's not too shabby. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Granite Gargoyle? There's the Granite Gargoyle, which is, in my opinion, the MVP of these matches so far. He kicked my ass in game one with a, a full Gargoyle Air Force. And also in game two, the Gargoyle played an important role. There's the Savannah Line. Playing a Psionic Blast here on the Gargoyle. Does mean I'm going down a card again on four cards, going back up to five. This is tough, you know, with the Loa, because do I want to wait? Do I really want to do that? I guess I don't. Tapping out completely. There's an Air Elemental. An Air Elemental is kind of difficult for Yoop to deal with because of the four toughness. I mean, if he attacks here with the line, he's kind of signaling a bolt. And I think I should take the trade if he does it, because it's still a two for one and it's not a bolt to the face. Tapping three here. There's a Satchtral. That is annoying. Remember, it's a three three because of the Badlands and the Scrubland. There's another Lion. I mean, there's so many creatures all the time, it seems. There's always that pressure. Five cards in hand. I mean, if I can find an Ancestral Recall, that would be ideal. Tapping four Clone. Probably cloning the Air Elemental. So two 4-4 four, four Flyers. 
attacking with one, so trying to be kind of aggressive here. And why not? Because next turn I've got eight in the air. I can, I can put him on six. And he's only got two cards in hand, by the way, and no book. Remember, he usually had a book in the previous games. I mean, I've already lost, but I so want to win this third game. There's another Granite Gargoyle. Those Gargoyles, they're so good. The fact that you can pump the toughness is just way better. He's going to attack with the Setch. So is he bluffing or does he really have a Bolt in hand? He is attacking here. Why not? Because if he doesn't have the bolt, he can still regenerate. If he's got the bolt and I block, he can kill my, my air elemental. It's a win-win for him. And now I'm in this tough position. Am I going to take three drop to 11? I think I should just block here. And, you know, it is what it is. Then again, he's on 14. I can attack for eight, perhaps. Oh, this is really tough. This is really one of those moments. I am deciding to block here. Hopefully he's uh, bluffing, regenerating. Does he have a bolt? Keeping the, my fingers crossed here. There's a plateau passing the turn. So I'm lucky here. He doesn't have the bolt. Five cards in hand. I've got another difficult decision to make. I believe I should just attack for eight. Put him here on six. I've got all the factories in the world to block. Only attacking with one, though. I'm being patient, it seems. Attacking with two. I think that's a good decision because then I can put him... If he takes the damage, he's on six. And then next turn, he has to block the flyers. And also, he only has two red open, so he can only make the gargoyle two four. So I'm kind of pushing him in the corner here, which is a position that he's put me in in the previous two games. So I'm on 14, passing the turn. I've got three Mistress Factories, three other mana as well, four cards in hand. My opponent only has two, it seems, or just one. I mean, I've already lost a match. I'm down two games, but I mean, I so want to win this to kind of show you that Timmy Spellbook can win against this deck. I mean, one of the things he can do here is play an Armageddon, kind of destroy all my factories, but the problem is then uh, he cannot really block with the Gargoyle anymore, and he's putting himself in a difficult position, attacking here just with the Sedge. So I'm going to animate my copy artifact here. That's a factory. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Pump it to 3, and I can pump it up. So making it a 4-4, four -four. pumping it with the other factory and pumping it by itself. Are we going to see a disenchant? Doesn't really matter that much. I'm really focused on the air elementals. I hope the air elementals survive. So he's regenerating, passing the turn. This is really good news for me. Finding an island. Tapping four. Do I have a control magic here? I could win the game if he doesn't have a disenchant. Oh, I can win the game now. Tapping down the gargoyle. And swinging in! Yes, I am at least winning game number three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a good feeling, really happy. Ah, thank you, Yoop, again, man, for another match. We've played so many matches against each other and it's always cool and exciting to play against your decks. This is a really interesting brew that you've got here. Congratulations on, win Congratulations on winning this one. And I would also like to thank you, the viewer, for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Before you go, I'd just like you to ask to uh, like, share, and comment on this video. All that helps uh, is free and helps the channel move forward. And before you go, please consider taking a look at my Patreon page, which you can find on patreon.com slash timmytalks. And uh, there you can find out how you can sponsor the show. So if you like the videos I make, please consider becoming a sponsor. It already starts with $1 a month. And one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The light in the morning. Way day up she rises. Way day up she rises. Way day up she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long water till he's so 